This is the second part of a Unity 3D tutorial showing how to create snow. So we've already got our snow particles that are occurring over here. What we want to do now is to create another effect so that when they hit the ground they cause a little sort of puff of snow, um, a splash as such. So this is the same technique you would use if it was raining. So let's create another particle system that will act as our little snow explosion as such and let's just zoom down on that. So we've got our default system we want it to move randomly in all directions as you can see there. Now it doesn't look like much of an explosion at the moment. We need to turn down these values so that they don't live for as long and possibly have less of them as well. Now these particles are getting created inside an ellipsoid which is one by one by one. If you want them to come from a single point you need to set these values to zero so that the ellipsoid is really small. Now you can see that the explosion is a lot tinier coming from that point. Also we want the particles to not go in all directions but more or less go up and as you can see here we've now got kind of sprinkler effect as such where they're all coming out of the one place. An explosion when it occurs doesn't continue like this one here is. So this one shot setting click on that, we can create little puffs of explosions that you can see there. This is uh, not in game mode so it's just looping around what you might get. When you click on this one shot it calculates the randomness from all of these values based on one set of particles and emits them all at the same time. So each time that it occurs the one shot will give you a random effect but something that's very similar. For this next part we need to add some script that will keep track of each of the particles and their energy. So here's a really simple script that we're going to add to our particle system. All we need is a late update function which runs as the very last thing uh, on an object. If there's any other script functions, this is the last one that will run. Now, we've added this to a particle system which means we can grab each individual particle that's coming out. These particles are in an array called particles and each particle has a number of different properties such as energy that you can see here. Now the very first particle that is emitted is particle zero. So in our array here that we've created which equals all of the particles we want to print out the value of this very first particle. Uh, to do that or to see it happening, I've run this before, let's run it and just take note of the values. Okay, so here you can see that the value of the energy of that first particle is slowly going down. Eventually it'll get to zero and it won't exist anymore. Okay, so we just stop that. Now the point where it didn't exist anymore was just about here. So we can see this bit. It the energy for particle one got to zero, and then it suddenly went up again. When it went up again, it was respawned. So it started again back where the emitter is. Now we want to use these values to determine when a 
particle hits the surface of uh, the terrain in this case. And when it hits the terrain, we then want to create an explosion. Right, now through the magic of video editing, I have moved the camera view so that we can see the snow as it's hitting the ground. So where are we? We've got particle system, we've added our hit script, and that hit script is printing out a value that you can see down in this bottom corner here, which will show you the energy of particle 1 as we run the game. So let's just watch down in that corner, you can see the energy of particle 1 going down and when it gets below zero it will shoot back up again as it's respawned. Right, so we need to know when the particle has hit the surface of the terrain or anything else that has a collider not when it dies because these particles here are essentially just falling through the terrain they're not actually colliding with it so we can add to this particle system a world particle collider let's add that now as soon as we do this notice the particles of snow are now bouncing off of the terrain an interesting effect but one that we're not actually after. So when the particle hits the surface, let's turn that back on again, if it's still got energy left in it then it will bounce up, watch this one here, until it runs out of energy where it will die and you saw that there. So what we want to do now is determine when the particle hits the surface. Obviously we can see that it's bouncing, um, but we need to be able to grab that within a script. So we can use this collision energy loss value here to determine when the particle has hit the surface. If we set it to 50, it immediately takes all the energy out of the particle because the particle's maximum is 20. Okay, so if we take away 50, then um, it got, becomes below zero and it respawns. Now, interestingly, we can't actually test for this in the code as such. What we need to do instead is reverse the effect. If it collides, instead of an energy loss, we want to give it a massive amount of energy and then test if the particle has received a large energy boost. Now to add energy we use a negative value and let's add 100 onto collisions. Okay so let's go back into our script where we can now use this value. So in our code, let's test for the energy of the particle and we'll just test for the first particle's energy, otherwise it will be too expensive if we keep printing out values. If its energy has suddenly become larger than the particle emitter's maximum energy it gives particles, then we want to print out a message hit surface okay so now when the particles energy suddenly bursts essentially from hitting the surface we'll get a message printed <laughs> 